This video will show you how to make glowing embers, or leaves blowing in the wind, or dust particles, which will make your renders really stand out and give them an animated dynamic feel. So hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott, and we're going to be creating glowing embers, which is relatively quick and easy. This is a beginner tutorial, but not for complete beginners, so I won't be going through the interface. And if you like what I do, then do check out the links in the description to the playlists on this channel or my website for more great content. So I'm in Blender 3, the alpha version, but this is exactly the same to 2.93 and earlier. My shortcut keys are down the side here, and I'm going to set up a really basic scene with a monkey and a plane just to start with. This is basically just so you can see where I am in the viewport, but not important to the tutorial, so I'll speed it up. Okay, so I want my particles to come from the side around here and float across and kind of jitter around the place a bit. I'm going to use a particle system to create the particles and then some force fields so we can easily influence the direction. So the first thing we need is an emitter. So I'll press Shift A to add and a plane's a good one for this. It doesn't really matter about the object too much, but a plane's nice and easy. So I'll choose a plane. I'll grab that across in the x-axis and I'll rotate it in the y minus 90. So it points in this direction. So R Y minus 90. And let's go to side view with one and I'll just move that up a little bit and maybe scale it up and the particles will emerge from there. So in order to create particles we come to the particle properties down here, click on that, add a new particle system by pressing this plus sign here and immediately it's set to emitter here and we've got some particles. Now if I start playing you can press spacebar or you can just click and drag the playhead along. You can then see all these particles falling out and they disappear somewhere around here. Let's just see that in its entirety and it starts to disappear around about 200 and completely disappears at 250. So let's go back to the start. So the first thing we want to change is the amount of particles. So let's put that to something more reasonable about 200 and go back to the beginning and then kind of restart and you can see the effects. It's always best to go back to the beginning to kind of jolt it into restarting. Sometimes if you start from the middle, it doesn't kind of pick it up. So always go back to frame zero. So you can see those coming out and at frame zero, we can't see any. Well, we can actually change the start time. So if I put minus 100, for example, then you can suddenly see lots of particles starting to emerge. But if I start it and put it at frame one, you can see that they're actually spilling out already. That's because they started ages ago at frame minus 100. And that's nice if you want an animation to kind of start at frame zero, but have lots of embers in it already. Now, if I keep scrolling along, they die at 200, and that's the end time for creating particles there. And we can increase that to 250 so they go all the way to the end of our scene. And again, bring it back to the start to kind of rejolt those particles into action. Now lifetime, they've only got a lifetime of 50, so they're cutting off around here. That may be okay, but I'll show you the effects of that if we turn it down to 10. And then again, start from the beginning, we can see it disappearing almost straight away. So around about there. And then if I bring this up, timeline back to the start, you can see they've got more of a lifetime and then they die when they hit here. We can also, if I turn this up to something like 30, let's just check that, and then use the lifetime random and put that up to something like 1. Now we should be able to see that it's got a sort of more natural death where some of them die early, some of them die late. So that's looking fine, but at the moment they're these balls. And what we'll need to create is an actual particle that we want these balls to look like. So for this, I'll go to top view with 7 on my numpad. Move over to the side here and start creating it around about here. So shift right click to move my 3D cursor, shift A to add, and we'll add a plane. I'll zoom into that with period key on my numpad and scale it right down so it's fairly small. Into edit mode, and there's a couple of ways of doing this. I'll zoom in a bit closer. The easiest way is to right click on this and subdivide. Then you've got some vertices to play with. I can then just grab these and move them around till I have a different sort of ember looking thing. Probably a little bit spiky, so we'll come into about there. And of course, if you're doing leaves, then you'll want a leaf shape. So that's one, but it's nice to have a bit of variation. So we'll create three of these at least. So into object mode, shift D to duplicate, move it off to the side and tab into edit mode once again and change the style of it a little bit like this. That's great. Into object mode with tab, shift D to duplicate, move that off to the side and tab into edit mode. And let's change the shape of this one. Okay, so we've got three different looking embers. So back into object mode and let's zoom out and let's go back to our particle system over here. So I'll click on this. And in order to change the balls into these objects, we come down to the render settings here. So click on the disclosure arrow. At the moment it's rendering as these 
halos. If we press the down arrow, we've got a few options here. Now we've got object, so I can click on object and then where it says instance object, I can choose my picker and choose one of these. So let's choose that one, for example. You can see the scale is really small, so I'll just up the scale slightly and you can see the emitter being turned into those embers. However, there's a better way. What we can do is select all these and move them into a collection. So M to move to new collection and call this embers and press OK. So there's our embers there. Now in the particle system, if I click on that and go to render as object, we can actually choose collection instead. That's much easier. And where it says instance collection, we can change that to the embers. So instances are copies if you're wondering what they mean by instances. Again, we've got the scale option here. We can scale them up and down and you can see the different shapes there. We've also got an option here to scale random so we can give them different sizes, which I think works nicely. They look a little bit big, so I'll just turn that down slightly, probably around there, I think. So they're quite small. So around 0.4. It does depend on your particle sizes over here, though. OK, so that's looking good. Let's see what it's going to look like when we play it. So they're falling downwards. That's no good. We need to change that. And they're all facing the same way when they fall. I'll just make them a little bit bigger so you can see them for now, and I'll bring them back to 0.4 later on. So let's play that again, and you can see they're all facing the same way. Well, we've got a rotation option here, so let's tick the rotation, click on the disclosure, and just up the random. Now when we play it, you can see they're all coming out in different directions. There is an option here, dynamic, which means they can sort of collide into each other and affect each other, but that's not really necessary for what we're doing. Okay, so they're falling downwards, as you can see, and we want them to go across this way. Well, there's a few ways to do this. The way I choose to do it is with some force fields, so I kind of remove any gravity from these and just use force fields to affect the way they're moving. So to remove the gravity, we scroll down and we've got field weights. Under field weights, bring the gravity to zero and then you'll have this effect. And you can see they're going across the side like this. Let's zoom out a touch and I'm going to add some wind over here. So let's go to front view with one on my numpad, shift right click to move my 3D cursor and shift A to add. Force fields you can find down here, and there's wind at the top there. It's pointing upwards at the moment, so R, Y, minus 90, and it should point this way. Let's see what this looks like. It's not having much effect. Well, let's click on the force field and go to the physics properties here, and it's just a matter of putting up the strength. And we can actually grab this yellow arrow here and change the strength kind of dynamically in the scene. Let's see what that looks like now and it's affecting it nicely. Looks a little bit strong, and it looks like we're going to have to increase the lifespan of our particles. So let's bring the strength down to something like three, and I'll press spacebar to play. Probably still a little bit fast, so probably something like one, mother looks things, and they're floating relatively nicely at the moment. So let's change the lifespan, click on our plane, and go back to the particle properties. Lifetime, let's change that to something like 300. Back to the start, press play, and we're certainly getting there now. They're covering the whole scene, but they kind of start quite late. So let's decrease this frame start. So minus 300, and let's see how that looks. And you can see it's got a much better start point now, and we're getting somewhere with these. Now, the only thing is they've not got a lot of life to them. They just float straight across, and they're a little bit dull. So let's go back to the particle settings once again. There's one useful thing we can use. If we scroll down to physics, there's something called Brownian, and that's kind of jitteriness. So if I up this to something like 10 and restart, you can see we've got a lot more floaty jitteriness. Probably a bit too much, so I reckon it's gonna be around six. This will depend on the size of your particles and the strength of the wind and things, but you can play with these settings and hopefully come up with something similar looking to this. OK, so that's working quite nicely. But if I go to Material Preview mode, it looks a bit dull. We need to add some glow to these. So let's go across to the Shading tab. And we're not changing any of the settings for the plane. We're actually changing them for our original particles over here. So I'll zoom in on those with Period Key on my numpad. And this is another reason why we chose a collection of three different types we can put really slightly different shading on each of them. So I'll just click on New here, zoom out just a touch. There's my principal BSDF. You can change the emission color here. So if I click on that, bring the brightness up and push it across to red, you can see a slight emission coming from that. Then there's the emission strength. If I change that to something like 30, 
it's nice and bright. It still doesn't look that great though, but if I come across my render properties and put on the bloom, then suddenly you get that kind of glow which you'll want. So let's go to the next one, and I can either give this a new one or I can just choose that material that I've already made. So they share that material at the moment, but if I click this, add new material, it will add a new material based on the old one. So I can just change this really slightly, maybe give it a bit more orange, and maybe make it 50, so it's a bit brighter. So the last one, choose one of these materials, create a new material based on this one, material 003, change the emission, and I'll make this a bit more ready, somewhere around there, and 40. So there's our embers. Now there's certainly more you can do with this. You could even change the emission strength for each of them and animate it. And you can certainly experiment with the colors more to make it look that bit better. But for now, let's zoom out and see what's happening to our particles. And there we go, they're looking good. Let's go back to layout and that will give us our timeline. And we can play that and you can see there's our particles floating around. I'll click back on my plane and scroll down a bit to the render and change that scale back to 0.4, which I think was a bit better. And now we're getting those sort of glowing embers, which I think works quite nicely. If I turn it to render view and hide the light, we kind of get the idea of these glowing embers going through here. Now, one thing you might want to do if I come out to front view and press shift right click somewhere down here and then shift A to add, there's some fun types of force fields you can use. Turbulence is a nice easy one, so I click on that and go back to the start. It's not having a lot of effect, so let's go to the physics properties and let's change the strength to something like five and restart. We can see that it's being a bit more random with some of the floatiness and the turbulence is sort of pushing them around in different directions. And you can animate this by G to grab and place it in different places so it affects the particles in interesting and dynamic ways. So of course, if you've got blowing leaves, you can up the strength of the wind and change your collection of embers to leaves and you've got a cool windy scene. The same with dust particles, just make your particles really small without a glow and you're pretty much there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.